And the catch is made by Taj Washington. Touchdown, USC. Blocked by Embiid. Timmy, yes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Beef Upfront podcast here on PickSwap Media. This show is Ryan Coyle, as always, back with another episode as part of our lead up to the NBA draft with our prospect profile series. Today, we will be diving into freshman guard out of Baylor, Keontae George, six foot four, 220 pounds, 19 years old as of draft night. Averaged in his freshman year at Baylor, was a bit up and down. Um, but, but I really like his long-term potential. I think he's a, one of the guys that could be a better player at the NBA level than he was in college. In his lone year, at fre- uh, freshman year at Baylor, he averaged 28.6 minutes per game. Was not that efficient, though. 4.7 field goals made on 12 and a half attempts. That's good for about 38%. Uh, 2.3 attempts from three, 6.9 attempts per game. Shot only 34% from three, so not ideal numbers. Shot it's 79% from the line, though, so I, I like his numbers. It potentially translates to, to, to some better shooting, excuse me. 4.2 rebounds per game, 2.8 assists, 0.2 blocks. Did have 1.1 steals, showing a little bit of uh, steal artistry on, on that end of the 2.9 turnovers per game, so it needs to take a little bit better care of the ball. And 15, three, 15.3 points per game, excuse me. If you're going to take a swing on a guy, though, that I think in this draft that can potentially be a 20-plus per game score from all three levels that isn't one of the top five picks, I think George is your guy. Not the most efficient player from the field in college, but I do think he's the definition of a microwave and a guy that can just be a pure bucket getter at the next level. When Keontae George is good, I had just had it written down here on my on my notes. When Keontae George is good, he's fucking good, like scary good. And like has flashes like, wow, this guy could be an elite scoring guard at the next level. Uh, I'm ha- having a hard time not pinning him as one of the top 10 players in this class. And I think when we look back, he might be the best overall guard in this draft. Like it wouldn't surprise me if he can take over Scoot Henderson as like the top guard, lead guard in this class when it's all said and done. Because I do think his shot making and his ability to hit threes is already advanced from Scoot. Not the most efficient in his freshman year at Baylor. But his just ability, just watching the film, like you you can see it with him. Scoot is more of a question mark, I think, going forward. Scoot's certainly a better athlete, might be a better overall playmaker, uh, better defender. But I think just putting the ball in the cup, like it wouldn't surprise me if we see Keontae George as like a 23, 24 point per game score in a couple seasons. So when you look at his strengths, just putting the ball in the cup flat out, he might have an argument to be the best pure scorer in this class. Like if we were playing a game of one on one with, you know, even height, like guards on guards, I think Keontae George would be my pick to go out there and win it and be the number one bucket getter in this class. I just love his ability to get to his spots. He pulls up whenever he wants. It seems like he always has control on the offensive end of what he kind of wants to do, create space and rise up from the mid-range area as well as deep. And it's great when it comes to self-creation. Like that's where I think he he's a notch above Scoot Henderson as well. His pullback dribble, like his pullback move is so explosive and creates so much space. It's really a special move to watch and something I think that will translate because he creates so much space with it. Like there's some guys in this class uh, that we've already talked about in terms of like Bryce Sensabaugh, um, Jet Howard, like guys like that where you see some some good offensive game to them, some good self-creation ability at times, but they're hitting like tough shots with defenders in their face. Keontae George is getting a, f- a full like – few feet from his defender and able to kind of embarrass him off the dribble and then pull back and hit these pretty crazy shots. And and he does it with a lot of swag and confidence. And that's something I think that really will carry over into the next level knows how to play in the screen game with the ball in his hand and move a maneuver around them to pull up just really good at using screens and doing like the snake or being able to hold off guys and just pull up. And like I said, always seems to get to his spot and gets, gets to where he wants on the defense or excuse me, on the offensive end. Very good at getting to the rim too, and taking it to the chest, drawing contact to finish your defenders only six, four, but he's got a pretty rocked up two two 220 pound frame. That's like a, like a big running back, like almost like a 
Derrick Henry type build. Derrick Henry is probably more like 245, but like the 6'4 frame, like he's a pretty big dude for, for only being 6'4. So really like his body too already at the NBA level. Very good deci- decision maker on the catch too, I think. When when you see him catch it on the wing, like he's already looking, he's already one step ahead of you where he's catching, he already knows, all right, he's going to close out to me like this. I've got my left hand and I'm going to be able to get all the way to the cup. Or he's closing out really hard. I'm going to be able to pump fake, slide, step, shoot the ball. Very good making quick decisions off the catch. And I think that's another important thing, a high IQ player. And he makes good reads and always seems to know where to go with the ball. So very nice, clean catch and shoot mechanics. Good playmaker too, knows how to navigate the pick and roll. And he makes some pretty eye-popping, flashy passes, like a bunch of no looks or kind of thread the needle. Like he makes some nice passes, only 2.8 assists per game. But Baylor was such a guard-heavy team. It's kind of hard to have dominant assist numbers in that kind of uh, that system. Like it's kind of reminds me of like Florida State with all the athletes they have. Like they'll never have a guy average like 11 or 12 points, more than 11 or 12 points per game just because – they have so many guys that are the same and have the same skill set where they're just such like a good overall team usually together. And I do think he can be a pretty solid defender at the next level. Like I said, he's already got a pretty strong frame to him. He's got that lateral agility that we see on the offensive end. And, and to be a solid defender, it, he he's going to need that to, to be able to guard ones and twos at, at six foot four. So a lot of strengths and a really, really high ceiling offensive player and already like a high floor type guy. When we took look, take a look at his weaknesses, though, as all young guys do, he does need to improve his defense in some regards. Like I said, he's got the frame and showed the ability to be a pretty solid defender on, on certain nights. But he does need to just improve his overall defensive game, just like a lot of young guys do. Keep in mind, he's only 19 years old. And that just comes with the experience and learning how to navigate the highest level of basketball. Also on offense, as I was saying with the efficiency numbers, he can force too much at times and try to press when – the issue, press the issue when it isn't needed. Like hence the efficiency numbers of only 37% from the field and, and about 34% from three and playing at Baylor too. I don't know if it was the greatest overall fit for him. I'll talk about that with Cam Whitmore at Villanova. Like there's certain systems where made for certain guys, like Baylor's not really getting many one and done players. And we see why just because they're a development program. They're a team that builds guys up and Keontae George, I don't really think was the, the right fit for that team and that program because it's just a weird fit for a one guy to come in there, just like Cam Whitmore at Villanova. We never really saw like a true fit. So they have so many ball dominant guards in that system. And so many guys, like I was saying, that are able to make plays and go create shots themselves. I think it it's kind of hard to, to find your way and truly settle in there unless you're there for a few seasons. So I think in the NBA, he could have more potential just with, excuse me, with a more dignified role. And they're like, all right, you're our, you know, CJ McCollum type guard on our offense or whatever go be the the number two option for someone and be like a 20 point per game, 22 point, 22 point per game type of guy. So not an overly explosive athlete. It's one of his question marks as well, or the overall biggest guard. Like if he was six, five, six, six, I think we would see him as like a top five pick potentially six, four, but strong, a strong six, four, as I was talking about. So um, a, a pretty solid frame, but not like the overall biggest. He, he, he's not going to be the, the picture perfect prospect when, when you're picking your guy or painting a guy out. So uh, might have some trouble at the next level finishing in terms of getting over the rim just because of not being the tallest or having the longest overall like wingspan arms. So he could struggle in that regard, but I do think his ab- ability to create separation and thrive out on the perimeter will kind of eliminate those concerns a little bit just because he's so good in that regard just needs to continue to increase that athleticism and continue to add strength to that frame that's going to still allow him to be athletic that i think that's the key just keeping that lean kind of a rocked up physique and it's just really hard to, to find many red flags in his game outside of just the efficiency as i was talking about but you see the scoring flashes and i just think it's sometimes he, he tried to press the issue and force a little bit too much which might have caused those numbers to go down and he was a guy though that really improved as the year went on baylor was kind of up and down at certain points playing in that that rock fight of the big 12 but as the year went on and and he was playing better baylor was playing better as well so uh, i think having a more dignified role in the NBA and just the freedom more so not playing in such a set system, being able to go out there and just be the the bucket getter that he is, I think it's going to really benefit him. So my projection for him, I'll go with the back half of the lottery and the comparison, the guy's about the same size, same type of play style, the same kind of erratic at sometimes not really efficient. Uh, it's kind of hard not to compare him, I think to Jordan Poole and 
Jordan Poole got bashed on this year, but still was a 20 point per game score has already earned his second max contract or second contract in the NBA, getting that max deal or over a hundred million dollar contract, whatever you want to call it. And he was a second round pick out of Michigan a few years back. So if you're able to get Keontae George at pick like between 10 and 14 and you're getting a Jordan Poole right there, I think, you know, 10 teams out of 10 would sign up for that. So really high on him. And I think we could look back and he could be potentially the best guard out of this class one day. So that'll be the breakdown on Keontae George, freshman guard out of Baylor. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you haven't checked out our other episodes, please make sure to do. We've got a bunch and we've got some more on the way as well as we lead up to the NBA draft. So thank you everyone for listening as always. And uh, stay tuned for more.